That was beautiful sound effects. <laughs> Good evening. I have the privilege of introducing the Reverend Dr. Delois Brown Daniels. Four hundred and sixty two. Four hundred and sixty two. Four hundred and sixty two. What comes to mind when you hear that number? Four hundred and sixty two. One day I wondered to myself how many CPE students has the Reverend Dr. Delois Brown Daniels supervised in her tenure as CPE supervisor. So I contacted the ACPE National Office and made some inquiries. And the number that was emailed back to me was 462. Four hundred and sixty-two pastoral identities developed. Four hundred and sixty-two pastoral competencies enhanced. Four hundred and sixty-two theological frameworks shaped and molded. Now, Reverend Dee is going to speak more about this uh, when she comes here. But of those 462 students, I was her favorite student. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. I was always open to learning. I was never defensive. And I was never resistant. As a matter of fact, as the historical narrative goes, after being my training supervisor and seeing me all the way to full, she then decided to retire. <laughs> Truly, nothing can be said that adequately gives justice to Reverend D's impact but she has embodied three characteristics par excellence. Ministry, marriage, and motherhood. Ministry, marriage, and motherhood. First and foremost, Reverend D has been a trendsetter in ministry, serving as CP supervisor during a time when African-American female supervisors were far and few in between. As a matter of fact, for several years, she was only one of three full certified CPE supervisors who was African-American and female in the North Central region. Having to combat and survive racism in CPE, patriarchy in CPE, and sexism in CPE, all while remaining authentic to her own identity and resisting the psychological and emotional toils of hate and bigotry that sometimes exists in the group teaching process. The Reverend Dr. Dolores Brown Daniels has been a trendsetter in demonstrating to the world that healthy African-American heterosexual marriages do still exist. In a society that would portray black women as unhealthy, emotionally unavailable, and unable to maintain healthy romantic relationships, in a society that says African-Americans can't balance being in ministry and happily married, Reverend D continues to prove the naysayers wrong in her union to Bishop David Daniels. 
co-laboring. Co-laboring in ministry, not under him, not over him, but with him. I'd like to share with you something Reverend D told me one day in a confidential conversation. <laughs> one day, during individual supervision, when we were alone in her office, I, I asked her at the end, I said, uh, tell me something about your husband. And immediately, a twinkle in her eye forms. And I just knew that the next statement she'd make about him was going to be something holy and reverential and divine. And without any hesitation, she said, baby, that's my Mr. Goodbye. That's my Hershey's Kisses. That's my Nestle Crunch. <laughs> Last but not least, <laughs> she gonna get me later. <laughs> Last but not least, Reverend D has served faithfully as CPE supervisor and a loyal mother to her two children, David, and DeAndrea. Oftentimes, whenever she would come to these ACPE meetings, she would always bring her children with her and give them much attention and adoration. Her children have always come first before anything because she took serious an understanding that no certification or credential can take the place of a mother's love for her child. Thank you, Reverend Dr. DeLois Brown Daniels. It is because of your trailblazing path that the road has been made easier for a new generation of African-American CPE supervisors who now stand on your shoulders. Ain't it grand? Ain't it grand? Ain't it grand? And please know, I would be remiss if I didn't say, I don't stand here alone, but there are a great cloud of witnesses who stand here with me. There are a distinguished group of CPE supervisors who now rest with the African ancestors, but rejoice in heaven to honor Reverend D today. Allow me to call the name of Reverend Brenda Jackson, the Reverend Dr. George Polk, and the Reverend Calvin Runnels. We give you your flowers today and say thank you. Eyes have not seen nor ears heard all that you have meant to so many. Thank you, and I say. and let the church say amen. <laughs> oh, to my beloved sister and CPE journeyer, Reverend Dr. Danielle Bohoro, thanks so much for your very gracious introduction. I laugh because Danielle knows that when she first made the comment that I was her favorite, she was my favorite student, 
that Osapo said, lightning is going to strike you and everybody else close to you. <laughs> Danielle was my diligent student, and I'm so proud of her. She's published now and author. And I don't know how many of you all went to her workshop today, but they told me it was off the chain. God bless you. To the former North Central Region and the ACPE Board of Directors, thank you so much for the honor of being the 2018 Helen Flanders Dunbar Award recipient. To those of you who wrote letters of support, I will cherish your words regarding my journey and legacy for a lifetime. What a real honor this is. I must also acknowledge Advocate Healthcare and Advocate Illinois Masonic Medical Center. There you go, Advocate, let me hear you if you're out there. I had the privilege of working at Advocate for nearly 23 years. The vast majority of my 30 years as a CPE supervisor, chaplain educator, CPE educator, whatever the term is now, it was spent at Advocate Healthcare. To spend the last 17 years of full-time ministry at Advocate Illinois Masonic Medical Center was a real blessing. What a joy it was to supervise students, minister to patients, families, friends, employees, administrators, the executive team at Masonic, as well as being able to partner with congregations, community leaders, politicians, and business persons, and to lead one of the best team of chaplains in the world as the founding vice president of the Illinois Masonic Department of Mission and Spiritual Care. I must also acknowledge RIM. From the days of George Polk, I have found RIM to be nourishing, generative, and a spectacular place to learn and to serve. RIM's commitment to justice and liberation has given and taught me so much. Thank you, RIM. and friends of mine are here with me tonight. They have traveled from California, Illinois, Rhode Island, North Carolina, South Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Metro Atlanta to be here tonight. Stand up, family and friends, so they can see who you are. I love each and every one of you, and thank you so much for your love and support of me. Now, I have to recognize separately my children, DeAndrea, stand up, baby girl, <laughs> yeah, who works at Google, and that's why I can retire. She can take care of her mother. <laughs> and David, stand up, my handsome son, who is an entrepreneur. I thank God for my two children, for your love and your support for me throughout my years of ministry. God bless you both. Thank you. And now, for my man of nearly 33 years this year, while he is known as some as Dr. Daniels, the performance at McCormick, professor at McCormick Theological Seminary, others as Bishop Daniels in the Church of God in Christ, others as just Reverend Daniels, he is known to me as my boo, my man. No one could ask for more love, support, care, challenge, encourage me, and fun than I have had with you in these 33 years. I love you, baby, every piece of you, and I thank God you belong to me. <laughs> to receive an award named after the pioneer Helen Flanders Dunbar is truly overwhelming. I'm grateful for the opportunities granted me by the former North Central Region. In 1996, the North Central Region elected me as the first woman and first person of color to chair the board. We worked hard in making the North Central Region more inclusive. 
And during my professional journey as an ACPE supervisor, I had the honor of training CPE students from across the United States and different parts of the world, such as countries of Zimbabwe, India, Vietnam, South Korea, Mexico, and the Dominican Republic. Each student brought unique gifts and taught me so much. It was exciting to supervise each of them. And together we had to learn about complex issues of cross-cultural ministry. Together we had to learn about the ministry of respectful presence within the multi-religious context of a hospital like Illinois Masonic. And I'm excited now about serving on the advocacy committee in our new current structure. I'm committed to working with others in our organization, being its best, doing its best, and creating the best expressions of supervision and education. As we collaborate with our cognate organizations, we can train forward-looking, innovative, and effective caregiving leaders open to the challenges that we face as religious communities and the challenges we face in society. Let us redouble our efforts at enlarging the table. Enlarging the table so that new voices can be heard. Enlarging the table so that new perspectives can be taken seriously. Enlarging the table so that new visions of supervision and education can be seen. That has always been a hallmark of my journey. Wherever I have served, I've been committed to enlarging the table. I have been committed to creating tables where all are welcome. So this evening I say, let us redouble our commitment to learning from and learning with people of all backgrounds, immigration status, sexual orientations, and gender identifications. Let us redouble our commitment to learning from and learning with people of different Christian theologies and world religions. This is a rich occasion for the ACPE community to prepare students and super Supervisors to be part of a courageous vanguard that can lead the way forward. We must not be afraid to face our own inner demons, demons of divisiveness, demons of cold-heartedness, demons of greed, demons of bigotry and hatred. Yet as we face our demons, let us also wholeheartedly embrace our better angels. Each and every one of us, our better angels, our better angels of compassion, our better angels of tolerance, our better angels of honesty, our better angels of generosity, our better angels of justice, our better angels of hope-bearing practices, and our better angels of life-transforming love. In the communities that we train and serve, let us continue to create welcoming tables. In the world of that Negro spiritual that used to say, walk together, children, don't you get weary. Tonight I say, walk together, ACPE, don't you get weary. We've got each other. Back. God bless you and thank you so much.